Hi students, and uh, now that we've had an introduction to basic digital logic gates, um, we're ready to do the first lab. So in order to do that, I wanted to show you how to use Multisim Live, which is a free online circuit schematic drawing software and simulator. And um, <clears throat> just for an example, I'm going to show you how to implement this function using a digital circuit. So this is going to be um, A NANDed with B, and this is going to be B ORed with C, and that result is going to be X NORed. So let me show you with my, let me do a screen share here. So if you go out to multisim.com, you can use your email address, a student email address to make a student account. Um, once you do that, go up to the top right where it says um, create circuit. And that's going to open up this um, graph paper. And as you can see, there's a bunch of menus here with all sorts of circuit schematics. So this is used heavily with analog. But what we're interested in since we're doing digital circuits is this bottom menu right here. So this is actually a two input NAND gate. So if you click on this, then it's going to be a library of a whole bunch of different digital logic gates. There's a digital constant, a buffer, an inverter. And so this is what we're going to be um, using today. So in order to implement our function, this particular function we're doing an example with has three inputs, A, B, and C. So let's lay down those inputs first. The way we do that is we're going to select this digital constant. Okay, so when we get one of these and drop it onto the page by left clicking, uh, by default the, the name is DG1, and I can double click on this and I can change the ID to A. So I'm just gonna call this input A, and now I'm going to grab another constant. This is going to be B. And I'll get a third. Double click on this one to change the name to B. I'll double click on this to change the name to C. Great, so now I've just dropped in um, three of my inputs. And you'll notice that these digital constants, um, by default, they're set to one. So to change the value, you can toggle between one and zero by, if you left click, there's this target that appears down at the bottom. So if I press that, it's just going to toggle between zero and one, and that's going to be useful when we want to test the output of our circuit um, based on a certain combination of inputs. Okay, great, so now you know how to lay down our inputs and how to switch them between zero and one. So the next thing we want to do is if we look back at our function, our function has um, A and B NANDed. So we're going to need a NAND gate, and we want to pipe inputs A and B to the inputs of the AND. And we're also going to need an OR. So this is going to be the first level of our circuit. This is a two-level circuit. Is we're going to need a NAND. So I'm going to go back to this digital library and there's a folder with NANDs with different inputs. So we're just going to grab a two input NAND here and I'm going to drop it in kind of close to A and B because I know that A and B are going to be my inputs. So now to connect A and B as inputs, you want to sort of hover over this node and there's this like spool connector that appears. So if we left click, then there's a wire that's generated and now when I hover over the input of my NAND, there's this siren target that appears. So that lets me know that if I left click, there will be a connection that's made. And when the wire is made with a solid connection, it'll be labeled with that, um, this is my first wire that I've dropped in, which is kind of handy. You can turn that, um, that net label off, but it's handy if you're referring to the circuit and you want to describe to someone um, where to look. Okay, so then we want to connect input B to the other input of the NAND. And so now we have A and B connected to the input of our NAND. Um, the default name of our NAND is just U1. Now the next thing we're going to need, if we click on our function here, is so we have A NANDed with B. We also are going to need um, an OR gate with inputs B and C. So let's go over back to our schematic. 
I'm going to click on my digital library. There's a folder with ORs. I'm just going to need a two input OR. So I'm going to grab this and I'll put it at about roughly, this is in line vertically with my NAND gate. The reason why I like to um, orient my circuits that way is that it's very clear that these two gates are at the same level. So for reading the circuit from left to right, if we start at the inputs and then our inputs are going to kind of propagate to the right through these gates. And they're going to reach this NAND and the OR at the same time. So now we need to connect B and C to this OR gate. So C we're going to do in the same fashion as we did with the NAND. So I'm just going to connect this wire. Now um, this B input's already connected to the NAND, but that's okay. I'm going to hover over the input of the OR until my connector appears, and then I'm just going to drag it up to this line, anywhere on this line, until that siren connector appears, and I'm going to left click. And now I have my inputs connected to both of my first level gates. Okay, great. So now I'm ready for my XNOR. So if you look at our function, um, we've got a NAND, A and B are NANDed, we've got B and C are ORed, and now the result of this, so what's coming out of the NAND and what's coming out of the OR, is then getting XNORed, right? So this is the symbol for XOR, and then after the XOR occurs, there's an inverter, so we call this an XNOR. So we can grab an XNOR gate from our digital library as well. So it's down here. We just need a two input XNOR. I'm gonna grab it, and now I'm going to put it to the right of my other gates. Um, so this is going to be the next level as I'm reading this circuit from left to right. And I'm just going to take my output from the NAND and connect it to one of the inputs of the XNOR, and then same thing with my OR. Okay, so I'm almost finished. What I need to do next is, um, before I can run this simulation, I need to have a way of reading what my output is, okay? Because I'm going to go through and I'm going to construct a truth table by um, changing these values of A and B and C, putting in zeros and ones, um, and then reading the output. But as it is right now, I don't have any way of reading what actually comes out once the inputs propagate through all of these gates. So we're going to need um, a digital meter that's going to tell us whether the output is zero or one, true or false. So the best way i found to do that is actually to kind of pull out this wire a little bit so that um, there's room to connect our meter. So what I do is I go over to schematic connectors, I pick this junction, and now I can put drop this junction out here and then connect it to the output of my last gate. So now I have this extra wire which just gives me a little bit more space to drop in my meter. The meter is up in the menu called Analysis and Annotation, and it's the last one to the right. It says Digital, and the little icon is a green circle that has a zero slash one. So I'm gonna grab one of those, and I'm just gonna put this anywhere along this um, line. So I'll go ahead and put it at the end. Um, so now this says D, it looks like a minus, but it's just blank because I haven't run my simulation yet, but I'm ready to run my simulation um, given what the inputs are. So right now, by default, the inputs are all set to one. So if I were to run the simulation, and I do so by coming up and pressing this plus, then I can stop it, and there's an output that's produced here on the meter. So if I have A equals one, B equals one, C equals one, the output of my circuit is going to produce a zero. And um, I can change this to, let's say I wanna make A, equal to zero, I want to make B equal to zero, and C equal to one, and see what my output is here. So once I change my inputs, it reports to me on the meter that my output is out of date. And that's so that you don't can confuse that like, oh, it looks like zero, zero, one is producing a low, but actually it's not because we haven't rerun the simulation. So make sure you do that. So I'm going to press play again, and I'm going to run the circuit. I'll stop it. And now I see that the output produced is a high. Um, so when you want to save this schematic, 
Um, for this lab class, I'd like for you to save this um, with the output reported. So run the simulation, make sure that the output shows on the meter that this is indeed a high for input 001. And then to save this, you'll go up to this 3x3 grid of dots in the top left, and you can go export schematic image, and it will download a PNG of your circuit. Um, so let me know if you have any questions. We're going to be um, constructing the truth table by hand, and then we're going to verify it using the simulation in Multisim. So let me know if you have any questions.